Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be among the first who address the conference on the first day in the first section. And very obviously, it's also a kind of a charge uh, you have to take care of. Um, I'm going to make a competition with the previous uh, speaker and I try to be very short. Uh, not only because I'm uh, I'm trying to follow a path I've been pro, uh, following for the past eight years in many respects, if it's about political communications, and that is, if you wanted to be, uh, talk about the truth, you wanted to talk about your version of the truth, and you wanted to address reality on the ground, uh, then you need to be very precise and, uh, and also a little bit provocative and frank, uh, talking to the point uh, and um, taking and addressing issues uh, head on. Um, as a matter of fact, the reason for provocation is coming from a, a communicational perspective. Uh, we've seen so many approaches to what we are facing when we talk about migration, illegal migration and the migration crisis in general. But let's speak about probably one of the most important elements actually of the challenge ahead of us. And that is how and why we speak about these issues as we speak and how we use the language, how politicians, the media, is addressing the issue. How is it possible that in face of the facts, just one chart trying to suggest to you what is a perfectly available and readily, readily available data, going into details uh, if we talk about uh, reports coming from NATO and other established and well-organized, uh, well-esteemed organizations to, to which basically all European countries belong, Western Europeans and European Union countries. Not to talk about um, reports coming from uh, the services, circuit services underground, which obviously will tell you a lot more about tendencies, real numbers underground and the real nature of what you face. How is it possible that in face of that, we still face the question coming from uh, Hungarians, Europeans, naive Hungarians and Europeans, that what if it's only a misconception? What if the use of words, uh, as you see, are real words which are ready to address the real problem on the ground? Now we've been, I mean Hungary and myself, we've been in the focus of uh, communicational charges and attacks for the past eight years for many reasons. For the past three years, almost four by now, we've been in the focus of a vicious communication uh, campaign uh, trying to say, trying to suggest that we are not talking about reality on the ground. I, it's still a fresh memory and I recall how the Prime Minister, after the massacre in the offices of Charlie Hebdo, came out with the provoking but down-to-earth and honest recognition what one of the major challenges of our times is, as the title of the, con uh, the conference and the first section is suggesting. And in face of that, in face of reality unfolding in the upcoming months, during the summer of 2015 and during the, the autumn of 2015, uh, we still face these terms, these uh, uh, misconceptions or uh, descriptions of reality coming back and returning. I wanted to bring you probably the most indicative, the most symbolic picture of the whole past three, year, three years behind us and probably the entire migration crisis, at least in Hungary. Through this picture, or rather the framework in which was done, it was understood and then later followed, for the follow-up of the picture, is, uh, is a perfect illustration how uh, not simply public opinion, the media, public opinion and politics work, but how uh, the importance of rhetoric, the importance of the use of words and the, uh, in, uh, and the formation of communications is important. This is the famous infamous picture which was taken uh, in uh, Bichka. Uh, which is not far from Budapest, to the west, alongside one of the major railroads leading to uh, Vienna. At a date, uh, sometimes in August, if I'm right, when Hungarian, Hungarian authorities were trying to um, 
put just a couple of hundreds of people who were on the train in the Kalati railway station into uh, a registration center where proper shelter and provisions and also uh, the work actually registrating the migrants who have already entered uh, Hungary uh, were taken. That picture later, uh, or rather the collection of pictures uh, which was published by Reuters, have won the Pulitzer Prize. Allegedly, the picture shows the brutality of Hungarian police and became sim uh, uh, the intention was to symbolize the inhumane, uh, non-European, immoral behavior and attitude of Hungary towards what is happening uh, at the borders of Europe. We all know that this picture cannot be further, farther from the truth. Because in reality, this is what happened. And I hope the video is going to start. I think it was enough to tell you and suggest to you again the symbolism and also the, the factual problems of uh, the media coverage, the use of language, the narrative that was coming on Hungary, that was coming against a narrative which was trying to address the reality on the ground. Because uh, nobody ever suggested that this was the reality actually we faced. By the time we were able to catch the photo, so to say, which was spreading around the globe very rapidly, there were around one million sh uh, shares in, uh, in social media. Uh, whatever our complaints were made, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Pulitzer Committee has put it right, so they suggested that the picture actually was showing something different than uh, the original title. Um, the kind of harm that was uh, done, uh, not only to Hungary, but the whole issue of how to approach, how to interpret, how to talk about migration was already done. And I think this uh, is a symbolic uh, element of, actually, of everything we've seen for the past three years. Whatever happens on the ground, the narrative, or the framework of the narrative in which it is being portrayed is given, is provided. You basically can't really do anything against it. Why is it? How is it happening? Is it by a misconception? Is it, uh, is it a kind of uh, a devilish uh, um, um, attempt to, um, to, to, to go around uh, uh, people's will, or what's the, what's the real issue here? Because if we have a master plan, as many suggest, even in Hungary, uh, we face a problem, and that should be uh, uncovered. If it's a misconception, it could be put right. Now, our answer, actually, for the past uh, three years, and as we go on, uh, behind me, some almost 4,000 individual interviews given to the international media for the past almost four years, is that uh, the real problem is uh, that those who portray issues like this, those who interpret uh, what is happening underground, uh, driven by these pictures uh, and uh, uh, emotional approaches, basically share these emotions and approaches. They, they mean it, and this is the real problem. By meaning it, we face the real, the biggest challenge of our time if it's about political decision making and changing policies in the European Union, and that is uh, how to change narrative, how to, how to put narratives right. These are just a couple of illustrations from the past couple of days, actually, how in face of the past three years' developments, um, the, the visible, touchable, and penetrating resistance on behalf of uh, more and more member states against any kind of compulsory quota, which is being disguised uh, or dis uh, described actually as a, a kind of uh, solidarity. This is the new uh, buzzword, this is a new call word uh, if you wanted to talk about migration in Europe. So this is just a couple of illustrations how leading figures, leading politicians in the European Union basically deny the facts or go beyond them, bypass the facts on the ground, because everything, including those uh, lectures, the contributions we've heard today, uh, are suggesting that what we face when we talk about migration, the issue of migration is going to be with us for the upcoming generations, uh, is going to be with us, not only 
next year, but uh, probably until 2050 and beyond. And those challenges should be addressed. And not by misconceptions and not by conspiracy theories, but by reality. So what is going to decide, apart from the deeds we intend to do on the ground, the help we are intending to provide for those on the spot, say in Africa, in the Near East, or wherever it's needed, uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be the narratives or the narratives that are going to decide. Um, our biggest hope is that uh, the narrative, the, the ruling narrative we face on the, uh, on the ground now, could be overcome by a new narrative. Um, the only hope is, uh, because narratives only can survive if they have something to do with reality, that our narrative, our approach, which is an honest, frank, sometimes outspoken and provocative, is a lot closer to reality, actual and real reality, than the other narrative we have inherited and we have to cope with uh, as we speak. Uh, this is our experience here in Hungary. Uh, we've been in the forefront, we've been in the front lines of uh, this communication struggle for the past not only three but eight years in many respects. Uh, and we can also have another hope, apart from Hungary still standing and going against the tide. And that is, the debate ahead of us is not simply about migration. Because as many have suggested, many tiny elements, and also bigger and larger elements actually of the debate ahead of us, uh, are reaching beyond and going beyond the simple uh, problem of illegal migration and migration itself. Through the prism of migration, it is by now evident, I think the, just the latest developments of the past couple of days, including yesterday, for uh, Hungary's Fidesz, uh, who has suspended, frozen actually, its membership in uh, the EPP, is that uh, through the prism of migration, you can have a proper attitude basically towards all challenges Europe is facing. When we talk about migration, we are going to have a proper attitude talking about family. We are going to have a proper attitude to, uh, towards and talking about uh, uh, population issues. We are going to have a proper attitude talking about the economy. And we are going to have a proper attitude to, uh, about talking, uh, talking about the uh, uh, institutional issues in the European Union, how decisions are done, and how and what kind of democracy believe, we believe in. These are the issues, actually, we all have to talk about. And uh, increasingly, we see that migration is the new dividing line by which it is possible to have a proper attitude, or, or as we say, a real reality-based attitude towards those issues. Those on the other side, running the narrative we face today, uh, are increasingly having a misconception, as a matter of fact, because their version of reality, what they suggest as a solution, they suggest as a narrative, is getting farther and farther from the reality or the reality perception of the people of the electorate in Europe. Um, this is my short contribution. I believe uh, the upcoming uh, sections and the two days ahead of us are going to provide lots of ammunition to what I was talking about. We are going to collect this and use it uh, for our best, or rather for the best of our cause uh, for the upcoming period of time. Thank you for your attention.